for all your hemp wellness needs, information, products, parties, and merch, visit thebudplug.com. It's Mike Ross, also known as Mike on the Mic. He's getting ready for his upcoming 2022 comedy run. He'll be kicking it off at Vinnie Brand's Dress Factory Comedy Club. Caroline's on Broadway. Punchline Philly. You don't want to miss him take the stage at the DC Improv. Then he'll be coming to the Atlanta Improv. And at Chocolate Sunday's Comedy Show in Los Angeles, California. It's Mike on the mic. Looking forward to seeing you there. I want to talk about Dave Chappelle. Now, he did a skit or he did a monologue on Saturday Night Live a few days ago. Had everybody talking. I thought it was a dope piece of work. We seen the leader from the ADL make a statement today or, or yesterday, I believe. He said, we shouldn't expect Dave Chappelle to serve as society's moral compass, but disturbing to see NBC SNL not just normalize, but popularize hashtag anti-Semitism. Why are Jewish sensitivities denied or diminished at almost every turn? Why does our trauma trigger a pause? Now, I'm not sure if you saw the monologue, but if you did, how did you feel about it? And do you express the same sentiments as Mr. Greenblatt? No, I probably agree with him on almost nothing, but, um, you know, not to take away from him. I personally saw a little bit of it, and I think Dave Chappelle's hilarious. He's such a funny guy. Um, you know, if you look at, like, South Park, you know, it's a comedy show uh, made, you know, made by Jews, but in it they... They use such derogatory Jew hate terms, you know, dirty Jew, Jewish money. They, they threw out these words. The ADL never said anything to them, you know. Um, it's a bunch of Jewish guys who are writing it. They never said anything. All of a sudden, now you see Dave Chappelle come out. It was actually funny, and probably a lot of it was he was saying was true. So what's causing these guys to get so triggered, you know? It's a good question. Um I think the main fear is putting Jewish safety at risk. Because there's places now where Jews are getting attacked at random in America for being a Jew, you know, punched in the face, their hats knocked off. And we're trying to prevent that. So with so much trauma, it's like the analogy I gave before, the lady who used to get, you know, hit by the husband, when she drops something, she's scared it's going to get hit. So now when she drops something, let's say the husband changed his way, she's still going to flinch. She's still going to get very scared. Because in her brain is the pattern that when you do X, Y will you know Z, Y and Z will happen. So these people are like, and you know it is it was a little insensitive at the time, you know, when the Jewish people are like, whoa, stop talking about us and mixing us with you know other groups of evil people. We don't want to be mixed together with that. Then Dave Chappelle just come up right on there and start to like stoke the coals. It looks like they're pushing the divide and conquer strategy. It looks like there's an agenda that wants to create a separation between my community and your community. And for me, that's like the red flag. So I'm like smelling through all this, all this nonsense. I'm like getting to the bottom of it. And I'm like, why don't they want us to talk and collaborate? Something's going on. Do you think people within the ADL or in higher Hollywood, whatever the case may be, have a disdain towards black people? Because as I watched that, I, something that really stuck out to me was he said nigga twice on there on SNL, on NBC, and they let that fly. People were losing their minds laughing. But when he made jokes about the Jewish community, everybody was up in arms. Everybody was upset. And we're all supposed to be leading a cause against hate. But it seems like it's a very specific, generalized part and section of hate that we need to generalize and everything else is all right, fair game. What do you think about that? Well, let me just put it, I have two things. One is, let's say I start you dropping the N-word, right? You know? not okay i don't have permission to do that it's not allowed it's not okay neither should i and, and i shouldn't have said it either it shouldn't be accepted through anybody but we know okay how to. i like that and i agree with that but it happens to be today culturally from your community it's allowed it's it's there and it's understood and it's accepted that this is a word that gets used so for example sometimes i go to the airport you know and i'm going through the security and you know when you get to the security at the airport there's a lot of pennies on the floor so people emptying out their pockets. So I'm always like picking up pennies on the floor over there because I bring it to Jerusalem and I give charity. Every penny is a, a mitzvah. It's a commandment. You're doing a good deed with it. So I enjoy picking up the pennies. But when everyone, everyone looks at me, I'm always making a joke. Like, you know, you always got the classic Jewish guy picking up pennies on the floor, you know. And I'll make a joke about myself because you could do that because I'm Jewish. No one's going to get triggered by it. But if an African-American guy was like, oh, you Jews picking up pennies, it's like, wait a minute. Can you say that? So I think it goes both ways. You know, I can't start saying N-words and other people can't start making Jewish penny jokes. Everyone can make, you know, criticize their own selves or their own communities. But I think that's silly also. We shouldn't have an ego. My feelings shouldn't have to be hurt if you have something to say about us. 
but it's all fun and games until it becomes, you know, physical violence towards Jews. Then it's like, we're just so much trauma. We're not having any of it. So I think the ADL is probably protecting a beast that the Jewish people communicate and miscommunicate as themselves. Like the Jewish people are like, oh, the ADL is here for me. ADL is not here for you, Jewish people. They're protecting something much bigger. Um, they just, you know, the name Jew is just covering both realities. The thing they're protecting and you simple folk who are just trying to make a living and stay humble. I think it's a good segue to, to go into uh, what Kanye was saying about hip hop and Jewish executives. In one particular comment, he talked about how, you know, in black hip hop music, you know, we could talk about kill this, kill this, nigga that. And it's pretty much nobody is no outrage, you know, black on black. But as soon as somebody says something about to Jewish people, it seems like it's all hell breaks loose. But a lot of these execs we already established on the in, in hip hop are Jewish. How come they promote, fund, you know, the destruction of black people through the music? But as soon as somebody says something about Jewish people, it, it's, it's all, all hell breaks loose. But when it's black people, it's like they fund that and they don't care. Yeah, I think that's a great point, but it's, it's such a c complex thing because no one should have the right to, you know, the, the fact that they're promoting violence and drugs and then making that an avenue of like financial success. So now I'm a young African-American kid and I want to get some money when I'm older. I got to start like training myself. If I want money, I got to rap about killing and drugs and get in, and be hardcore. So th that's something that's being set by the Jewish people. Um, but let me ask you a few questions just on this, you know, let's say like, and I'm not a professional, you know, like, well, let's look at like Def Jam Records or like, you know, the, some of these guys, is there African-American owned media that's still promoting, you know, violence and drugs and gangster living outside of Jewish ownership? Is that, is that exclusive only to Jews owning these companies or there's also African-American owned? What company does African-Americans own? I, I don't know. That's why I'm saying this question out of ignorance. I was asking you more. It's usually, a, it's usually a part. It's usually like a like a, sometimes it's a partnership deal, but most of the time it's Jewish owned. They'll have like so like, like Def like Jam, Rockefeller, records and all this. Is this a Jewish guy at the top of it? Say, say it again. I didn't hear that part. Like part. Def Jam Records or um, you know NWO or whatever it is. These are Jewish owned things at the top of it. Like Jeff Def Jam, for example, sorry to cut you off. Oh, yeah, yeah. Current CEO of Def Jam, his name is Paul Rosenberg. He's been there since January 1st, 2018. The founders were Rick Rubin and Russell Simmons. So <laughs> <laughs> right. So yeah. I get what you're saying. Yeah, we do, we do, you know, um participate in it as well. I get what where you're trying to go with that as well. But it's still the underlying issue of the majority of these companies being ran by Jewish people that promote and fund this message. Can we agree with that? Yeah, it seems very shady. It seems that there should be, um, you know, these are, I don't know if these are people that have like rabbis that could even call them. These are like rabbi-less individuals. These are God-less individuals. These aren't people that have God in their lives. So it's not like we can get all the rabbis together and like sit them down and have a sit down. Well, they're going to listen to the rabbi. They're right. not even listening to God, how they're going to listen to a rabbi. Um, but I'm with you on the fact that there should be no Jew involved yeah. yeah, I had this phone call coming in. It shuts it off. Um, um, but I'm with you. If there was like a march to march against Jews who are um, promoting drugs and violence in the African-American community and creating a poisonous, toxic environment for you guys, I'm on your team. That That's totally evil. But like I said, I think these Jews finding these roles are serving something darker and higher than themselves. They're not the boss. Like they're getting a paycheck from someone also. And that someone is, that someone's the guy that the ADL is like, don't get to him. Like don't get to the top of the ladder who these guys are working for. You can't talk about that. And so I'm always curious, like who's really calling the shots, you know, because it's not the Jewish people. It's, it's some dark, darker fraternity stuff. You know what I'm saying? And it, to, to the best of your knowledge, who do you think, or in your opinion, who do you think those higher up people are? And where do you think the, the separation came between Jewish executives and Hollywood and music and yourself? Let's just put it like that. 
I think the guys who are really at the top, you don't get to know their names because they pay for you not to know who they are, you know? So the names that we're even given are the names that they let us get, you know? So you're going to throw out like, oh, Rockefeller and this name and that name. Those are the names they gave us access to. The names that we don't get access to is because they're the ones who are owning the wealth of the world, you know, calling the shots with wars, you know, and creating agendas to manipulate humanity. But where it stops and, you know, separates me from these individuals is they give a, a, an allegiance to something that's not Jewish. You know, these guys are all part of fraternities, um, you know, whether it's Masonic or, you know, they're their um, clubs from college, their, you know, with their Greek symbols and their cults and their, their rituals. Um, I know, you know, I don't want to get too deep into it until the right time is because this is like even dangerous for me to be talking about this type of stuff because we're up against a very dark force, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but th these are people who get paid by these entities, are loyal to these entities, and the Jewish people are just trying to unite the tribes, the lost tribes, and build a temple for all humanity and bring world peace. There's like two totally different realities. And I think if you looked at like, you know, the last few hundred years of Europe, when these Jews started joining these fraternities and getting involved in the, in the banks and the wealth and financing wars, um, they, they started taking on customs and traditions that had nothing to do with the Jewish people in the Torah. So there's just this divide going on. And the Jewish people aren't so aware of it, so part of my job is to explain it. And even part of the Jewish prophecies and our legends, we believe within the Jewish people there will be a dark side in the future that we're going to have to deal with. Uh, my ancestors taught this 400 years ago. I was a famous rabbi. I speak about this. And so um, I have a job to educate my people of stop defending the evil within us because that's going to hold us back from the ingathering, the redemption, and uniting with the lost tribes of Israel, which seems... Part of them came to America on these slave ships. So there is an agenda that doesn't want, like I said before, your community and my community building. That's the last thing they're going to want. They're going to want us to be divided, calling each other enemies, and do everything in their power to make sure a healthy conversation doesn't come out of what's going on.